Welcome to Covered. Today we'll be discussing the Earthquake Act and pre-existing versus earthquake damage with Reid Stiven, as well as looking at insurance matters with Dean McGregor from IAG. And a very warm welcome to Dean McGregor, who is the Executive General Manager for Canterbury Recovery for the insurance company IAG. Hi Dean, nice to see you again. Hi. Now IAG is an umbrella for quite a few different brands. Can you tell me which insurance companies you actually work with? Yeah, no, that's right. We, um, we have a number of brands. So we have State, NZI, Lantern, uh, Lumley and AMI. Just an important distinguishment with AMI is it was purchased after the earthquake, so the earthquake claims are managed by Southern Response. Ah, okay, so now, yeah, that kind of makes a wee bit more sense to me because originally that was separate again, then there was government involvement and now Southern Response is split off as well. That's right, so, so Southern Response is the government agency that uh, is managing the earthquake claims on their behalf. Okay, but those of us with AMI insurance um, claims sort of running at the moment are actually part of the IAG group now, is that right? Absolutely, for anything post-earthquakes yep. um, is all part of the IAG group. Okay, cool, right, thank you very much sure. for that clarification. So can you tell me, what is the next step for IAG? Where are you heading to now? Where are you progressing? So we've made some pretty good progress over the last um, you know, three and a half to four years. Um, and you know, we did initially have an expectation that we would complete the majority of our claims by the end of 2015. Now, sort of that was set in 2012. Since then, we've had several hundred more claims than we expected. And it's taken us longer uh, to build properties than we first anticipated as well. So we've now pushed that out to the, uh, the middle of 2016. Um, and we are on target to, to achieve that time frame. Certainly, if we were talking these kinds of dates not long after the earthquake, we all would have gone, how on earth can it possibly take that long? Mm. And now we're sort of there, and 2016, 2017 doesn't seem that far away. Mm. Why are these things so complex? Why are they taking so long? Well, I think a very good example was um, when we or originally set our program, we went to construction partners, engineers, designers, the builders themselves, and said, what do you think it'll take in terms of the average project? And we were working on about an average of 46 weeks um, from design right through to construction for a property. In reality, that's now looking more like 60 to 65 weeks. So we've had to reflect that into our program. We continue that's for a new build you're talking? Uh, both uh, new builds and repairs. And repairs, yeah. goodness gracious. So yeah. we're talking over a year within the process. That's yeah. right, and, and a lot of that is pre-construction actually, so it's a lot about the engineering, the design, the geotechnical investigations that need to take place to support you know, the, you know, the outcome um, and ensuring that actually you know, what we are building is fit and proper. And a lot of that's the waiting, waiting, waiting for reports and everything yeah. else that needs to be done. Unfortunately, um, you know, the majority of properties that we're working with um, at this stage of our program are either Port Hills or Technical Category 3, TC3. So, you know, they're challenging properties and they do require the amount of investigation to make sure we absolutely get it right for our customers. Okay. Tell me, how does a private insurance company work together with EQC? Yes, and that's a great question because it's been very confusing for residents of Christchurch. So in a, um, in a normal situation, um, EQC would cover the first $100,000 plus GST of any natural disaster. And the private insurer, in, in this case IAG, would come in over and above that. Because we had multiple events in Christchurch, um, we then had to grapple with that situation. And so what happens now is um, if any one of those events exceeds the $115,000, then the private insurer takes over the, the management of the claim. Once you're up over that over cap, as we call it, That's right. uh, what are people's options? So in the IAG program, um, we can either uh, give the customer the option of going through a repair program, in which case we have our PMO, which in our case is Hawkins, um, who will manage the, the reinstatement, either the repair or rebuild of the home. Or if a customer is wanting to manage that themselves, we can cash settle their claim and allow them to carry on and manage that process themselves. In which case they can choose their own builders and their own contractors and all Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, what happens if you want to change what you're doing? Because you know, if you're talking sort of a 60-week process, it's a yeah. long time. You know, things change. What happens if you change your mind or you decide, look, flipping it, let's do the kitchen at the same time? Mm. How 
how do you sort that out from an insurance point of view? So there's a couple of things there. Um, any stage up until a customer signs a, a construction contract, they might choose to take a cash settlement. And there's a number of reasons that it happen. And, and one of those reasons is that customers might decide, actually, I'm going to take this opportunity to do something quite different with my home. Now, insurance policies typically pay to reinstate what you had before. So, you know, the same size of home, we will pay for the uh, required upgrades, so whether that's um, double glazing or insulation or those sorts of things. However, if somebody's looking to make substantial changes to their home, then what we say is actually our program's not really the program to manage yours, and we would look to cash settle your claim to empower you and enable you to get on and, and manage that for yourself. So then do you start a negotiation process for what that cash amount should be? Yeah, and that's generally based on the policy providing cover for what the customer had before the earthquake or before the loss. So, so we would look at that and say, was the, was the property economic to repair? If it was, what would the cost of that repair have been? And that would set the basis for what we would, um, would settle a claim on. And if the home was um, not repairable, um, what would be the cost of reinstating that, um, that home with a new home? Okay. Working through this process, what kind of... Uh, for want of a better term, I suppose customer support is what I want to talk about. Mm. You know, who are these people having to deal with? How are you managing those interpersonal mm. relationships? Yeah, we've got a number of people that are involved in the process, and sometimes that's challenging in itself, having yeah. a, a, you know, a number of parties, but it's important that each one of them brings some, some unique skills. And, and so in our situation, we have um, a primary person who is our claims case manager, and they typically support the customer right from day one right through to the end, and they're our IAG employees, as is the IAG loss adjuster, who is really helping to determine what are you entitled to under your policy. Um, and often customers are uncertain about that, so we can work through that process. And if a customer wants to go through our managed repair program with our PMO partner Hawkins, then there's a, a rebuild solution manager, or RSM as we know them, um, who will support the construction side of that if the, um, if the home's going to be repaired through or, or rebuilt through our, repaired, uh, our managed process. Okay. And so there is a difference between your claims manager and your loss adjuster as well. Yes. So yeah, okay, that's so that's right. an important thing to, for people to remember too. I just want to ask you, you know, a lot of the last claims that are sort of going through this process over the next 18 months, yeah. two years, are the more difficult cases, you know, the ones that I suppose have been put on the back burner or the people themselves haven't been able to come to terms with the issues involved. A lot of those are places like cross leases and flats where you've got multiple owners to have to deal with. How on earth is IAG working to those solution, you know, to get a solution for those people? Yeah, and you're absolutely right. This is some of the most complex claims that we're dealing with from a residential point of view in Christchurch. So not only are there multiple owners involved in these sites, um, more often than not there's multiple insurers involved as well. So on that front, the majority of insurers have agreed to work together and what makes sense to us is that one of the insurers should lead that project on behalf of others. So, so insurers are working collaboratively um, on an arrangement like that. So we uh, have a number of projects that are underway now where one of the insurers is leading that on behalf of other insurers. Um, and there's two categories really. Um, there's properties that are up to sort of two or three um, individual units and typically uh, they're a little bit easier and then we have more complex ones which we involve an external loss adjuster who acts on behalf of both the homeowners and the insurers um, and helps to support that process. Complex issues for sure. Dean, yeah. thanks very much for your time today. You're welcome. Now when we come back we'll be talking to Reid Stiven about the Earthquake Act and pre-existing versus earthquake damage. Thank you.